Oh, God. We got drunk in the prayer room, so you're going to have to forgive us. They almost had to drag me out here to go from the prayer to the praise. But Brother Hankins said the highest type of prayer is praise. So we just continued the prayer meeting and brought it from the side room to the sanctuary. Some churches are moving it from the sanctuary to the side room because they were ashamed of the power of God. But you ain't ashamed. I ain't ashamed of the gospel. But I ain't ashamed of the Holy Ghost either. So, it's Deborah's fault I'm acting like this. Now here's what happened. Play sister, Mother Banks. We call her Mother Banks. Now if you're not Pentecostal, you don't understand that. But we were going to start out with a whole other song, Pastor Nancy. We were which had a totally different feel. But I walked out here and the song that just flew away. So, can y'all just help me shout and be happy just for a minute? Lord, we love you. Don't forget what we're going to praise here in a minute, Pastor. <laughs> I promise. I promise. <laughs> See, this is a Holy Ghost meeting. It didn't just say singing in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Uh -uh. It said speaking to one another. Don't think you always have to sing something. Sometimes you just declare something or you say something. The keynote thing is, where's life? What's the Holy Ghost on? Where's the river running? And I refuse to just ride one river. I'm not a one river runner. Listen, this is a demonstration that you need. Pastor Nancy said by the Holy Ghost, this is school of the Spirit. This is the Holy Ghost school of the Spirit. That means, keep going, Deborah. You're hitting it right there. Hallelujah. That means you can come out with one song, but that wasn't the way the Holy Ghost was coming. And that's not the way he's going. This is school of the Spirit right now. What do you want me to do? Change the river? I can't do it. Don't you almost feel sorry? Take it, be nice, be nice, be nice, be nice. I prophesy to myself, be nice. I just feel sorry for Christians. I call them one river runners. They got one familiar river, and they shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. This is my river, this is my river, my river, my river, my river. And I can't get out of this river. But what if there's multi-rivers? Oh my God! This is the way you get into healing rivers, miracle rivers, deliverance rivers, joy Hey, brother, keep going. Your back beat is right here. I want to hear the snare. Right where my hand is. Dot, dot, dot. There you go, brother. That's Pentecostal. No, don't let go of that. You stay full of the Holy Ghost. 
I don't want no Baptist river. I want a Holy Ghost river. Here you go, right here.
can save yourself five years of trouble. You can save yourself five years of counseling. If there is such a thing. When you sing that line, He healed my body. But I am a spirit and I have a soul. So He doesn't just come on my body. In an anointing like this, He touches my mind. I'm saving you a lot of money right now and a lot of bad advice. Amen, Sister Pastor. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. You've heard the wind and you've seen and flown in the fire. But sister, dear one, pastor, you through your gift is about to take this whole church up higher. Flow, 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 flow. Ha ha ha, ha ha ha, ha ha ha, ha ha ha. Okay, we're going to make a shift, I think. How many pastors in the building? Put up your hand right now. Oh, Deborah, my God, don't leave me. It felt like the Holy Ghost left. Don't quit. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> my God. I know he said he'd never leave me before forsake me, but I felt forsaken there for just a minute. <laughs> Thank God it wasn't three days and three nights. But it... Lift up your hand, pastors. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. The breakthrough you're looking for in praise and in worship. Praise is the door. Get out of the flesh. Move her over into the spirit. You might have a music director, but you're the lead worshiper. You might not be the worship leader by title, but you're the lead flower. You're the lead goer. You're the lead worshiper. You want to break through in praise? Break it through yourself! I can't do it for you. I could preach 365 days in a worship school and I can't do for you what you need to do for your church as the highest authority under Jesus in that church. You want to break through? Bust it open. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. I mean it. I'm not coming down on nobody. Hallelujah, this is the Holy Ghost. You can send your people to a praise seminar and do a worship series. And you know, we, we, we send them back as best we can. But you're the key. Uh, I'm looking at, I guess this is a pastor section. See, this is why you have to wear Pentecostal strength hairspray. <laughs> I feel it right now. There is such a thing as Pentecostal strength, industrial strength. Now, I, it's called grand finale. My mother had it, and my grandmother had it, and my great-granny had it, and I need it because that Pentecostal thing is coming on me. And when it comes on me, all of that falls. <laughs> but you cannot be, listen, I'm, we're going to sing, Pastor. I hope I'm not wrecking the service or Pastor. Listen, you're looking through a breakthrough. You're looking for a breakthrough. You're the key. You're the key. The pastor's the key. Some pastors don't even come in for the praise service. What are you giving your people what to follow? If you're not in the praise service, how do you expect them to be in the praise service? You're wanting a breakthrough? The highest authority in the church needs to be in the praise service. Don't leave it up to your music director. He doesn't have the calling you do. My God, this is good. I'm never. Yeah, yeah. I'm helping somebody. Yes. Pastor Nancy said by the Holy Ghost, this meeting is school of the Spirit. Well, we just had a little bit of schooling. Hopefully, it wasn't scolding, <laughs> but it sure felt like schooling to me. We're going to shift and sing one more worship song, I think, unless you want it now or you want one more little mid-range song here, we can do something. Uh, let's hot off the wire, guys. 
you're the pastor pastor of the church you're the leader lead them in the flow you don't feel like you're that well versed in it you don't feel like you're that skillful in it but you know I just found that it says you know when you take the training wheels off the bicycle you might hit a curb or two you might fall down every once in a while and skip well get on back on the thing and keep going just keep going keep going if a congregation y'all know this my dad granddad great granddad's a pastor if a pastor will get out there and just go ballistic in praise you'll tear that room up especially if you've never done it before my god they'll be in shock <laughs> if nothing else their legs will grow out because they're in surprise i mean it's just like and i'm serious i am so serious See, because they're used to your praise team. I, I'm still speaking by the Holy Ghost. They're used to the praise team. They've got familiarity with the front part of the service. There's formality, familiarity, mechanical, all of that has entered in in the front part of the service. You ought to get out there one Sunday and said, here's what we're doing this Sunday. I'm about to throw down in the Holy Ghost. Anybody want to join me? I don't even care if you can sing on tune. The Holy Ghost will fix it, and you'll wake up your congregation, and you'll shake it up. Get out of the familiar. Give me Deborah. Oh, dear Lord Jesus. We got to go to E-flat. Put up your hands right now. Jesus, we worship you. Jesus, we worship you. Jesus, we worship you. Lord, you're speaking to us. Lord, sometimes these things come out a little bit different, a little bit different expression, a little bit different utterance, a little bit different verbiage, but the deal is, Lord, we're following you. We are, we have abandoned ourselves. I have no other place to run. I have no other place to go. I have no other river to get into. I have no other or no other desire for any other flow. I just run after you. I have run after you, but you're more than enough. You're more than enough. And what I can't do, if I'll move in faith, I can do it in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will do great things. Say he will do. He will do. Every Sunday, what will he will do great things? Bless, bless his holy name. Next week, what will he do? He will do great things. For the next month, what will he do? He will do great things. All year long.
to drink and you know how you drink you respond don't sit there and hold on that chair like it's gonna fly away or something you got to get out and do it <laughs> Amen. <laughs> praise God so turn to your neighbor and say don't let these opportunities pass you by there's a lot of help in these flows and you need all the help you can get Hey, that's not a slam. I need all the help I can get. Amen. Praise God. Greet somebody, somebody, and just bless them, and then you may be seated. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Well, this is camp meeting. Tell your neighbor this is camp meeting. I mean, camp meeting is just another for a Holy Ghost meeting. Everybody say, I like these kind of flows. Amen. It's good to see you tonight. Welcome. Glad to have you here. Uh, if it's, it's a little warm, it'll, it'll cool down in a bit. Amen. And uh, we'll get, we'll get, we'll all be fine. Praise the Lord. Good to have everyone here tonight. I want to just welcome everybody. Thank you for coming. Thank all of you ministers and pastors. We've got a good number of ministers and pastors. And uh, thank you for coming. You're, you add so much to the flow. You add so much to the meeting. You're an your supply, your faith, uh, believe in God with them for what God wants to do in these meetings. So thank you so much. Hopefully I'll get to be able to fellowship with some of you uh, as, as the meeting goes on. Praise the Lord. Uh, but uh, you're different than some, some, some uh, minister's meetings I've been to. Some minister's meetings I've been to, it's harder to get the preachers in the flow of the Holy Ghost than it is the congregation in the flow of the Holy Ghost. That's not you. Everybody, know, everybody tell your neighbor, that's not you. Amen. Amen. We're in the flow. And uh, like Pastor Nancy said last night, if you haven't been in this flow, uh, get around somebody that is, somebody that's skilled in this flow. Praise God. And so that's what you're here for. Glad to have everyone. All right, we got just a few announcements we're going to make. Where's Brother Carlos? There he is. Come on up here, Brother Carlos. Make that real quick, if you would. Glory just, just be to, to God. Just tell him to refer to you. That's my middle evenings. name, quick. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I do want to remind you of the meetings Wednesday and Thursday, 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Doors open 45 minutes before that. Um, I mentioned earlier or previously that these are live stream, so if you do have family and friends that can't come, uh, hopefully they're watching tonight and they're jealous. So, so you can also e-invite them through the website so they can watch the services. Um, also, the services will be archived. Uh, because I can just tell you right now, we did not receive everything Pastor Nancy said last night in one service and hearing at one time. So they're going to be archived. You also can purchase the CDs. You're going to do it through the bookstore. They're five, uh, $5 a service or uh, $40 for all of them. Uh, we'll get them to you, order them after every all the services are complete. All my Spanish friends, hola, como estas? 
Uh, we have a YouTube channel for you, for all our Spanish-speaking people. We're excited about it. It's called uh, Espanol. So that's also available on eberlyministry.org. Uh, your precious people. Praise God. I thank you for all of you. Um, do want to remind you also, Pastor Nancy and Reverend Deborah, uh, Deborah Banks does have a book table back there with CDs and books also available for you. Um, we do have child care available in the evening services only for uh, children ages one through three. If you have children ages four and above, bring them in into the corporate anointing and get them used to that. Uh, my last announcement, there is water. We uh, Water and cafe items. We have a small cafe over here. Uh, water, snacks, before and after service, only in the evening services. During the day, we have the daycare run up and running, so it's not available at that time. That's my last announcement. Hallelujah. Praise God. And uh, I just want to make mention of the fact that prayer school and worship school started today. Uh, phenomenal, phenomenal. Uh, you got to get in these sessions. They start one hour after the session. And uh, they go for, I don't know, it just depends how the Holy Ghost go, leads, but an hour or so. So we uh, encourage you afterwards, uh, there are maps in the foyer that can tell you where they are. The worship school is right there, but the prayer school is in another building. So you can get a map back there in the foyer and get that information. Hallelujah. And we are excited about the, uh, li the uh, live streaming of the Spanish speaking. We have, I think, uh, Brother Juan's in the back. I think there's like five, there was planning on being about five Spanish speaking pastors here. I don't know how many we have, but uh, there's, we, we've got many of them here. Uh, yeah, have them stand up. If you, you are here and you are getting the earpiece in your ear listening, praise God. Glad to have you. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. We, we, we greet you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, poquito. Is that a little Spanish? Uh, that's about all I know. <laughs> all right. Um, we're going to receive the offering. Uh, hey, I got a delivery. Huh? A delivery. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, hold on. Stand down. I recognize this guy. This guy comes to our house all the time. He brings good stuff. We better let him in. Yeah, I, I know this is a little unusual, but I'm looking for uh, Pastor Nancy Dufresne. <laughs> Frank? <laughs> Are you her? Okay, perfect, perfect. I don't have to search the crowd then. If you can just sign here for this package, that'd be great. Right here. There's no fine print. It's just straightforward. Absolutely. And it's all yours. Perfect. All right. There you go. All right. Happy birthday. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> well, congratulations. Um, I actually, I know I look like a lowly delivery driver. Are you bringing my other one tomorrow? I actually have... <laughs> I'll do you one better. If you would allow me, I'd like to perform a little side gig that I do. Okay, perfect, perfect. Hey, T-Bone, kick it. All right, let's stand up. Wish Pastor Nancy happy birthday, happy hip hop birthday. Have a hip hop happy birthday. Have a hip hop happy birthday. With miles of smiles and lots of love during this special month. Have a hip hop happy birthday. Have a hip hop happy birthday. It's Pastor Nancy's birthday. Raise your hands in the sky. Sway those hands side to side. H to the A to the P P Y. Happy birthday, happy birthday. H to the A to the P P Y. Happy birthday, happy birthday. This is a month we celebrate. Your smile, your dream, your special way. Have a hip hop happy birthday. Have a hip hop happy birthday. Done. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Yeah, no, this did not break the anointing. You just take those thoughts and just get them out of here. <laughs> 
We are starting early. Pastor Nancy's birthday is in just a little over a month, but hey, we couldn't let camp meeting go by without helping get this thing started. And, uh, and that is the beginning of a week of deliveries. And so, um, yeah, she's going to open it right now. I can tell you what it is. It's a gift certificate. Yeah. Oh, oh, look, look, look. I have no idea what it is. <laughs> But uh, we we want to we want to celebrate. The congregation got together, and we we've been giving towards this, and so we're gonna spread this out for the rest of the week, all week long. That same nice fella is gonna show up all week long. Yeah, it's not all gonna be out here in the auditorium, but it will be. So praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what that story is. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we love you, Pastor. We love you, love you. And we don't just love the anointing. We do love the anointing, but we love you, and you're, you're honored in this house. You want to say something? You keep waving. It's a, what's the name? I, I didn't bring the name of the store up here. What's the name of that store? Uh, well, it's Corey. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it, it, it's jewelry. It, it, yeah, yeah, I get asked all the time from my television broadcast, where do you get your jewelry? Well, and so it's a certain, yeah. um, it's not a, well, It's online. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, praise God, we love you very much. And uh, listen, this is your month. We just started early. It's your month. The, the, the month of August is your month. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Last night she was preaching about, you know, there's some things you won't get into without the help of somebody else. God sends, God puts divine help on other people. And listen, our lives have been kept on course. And we're into things because of your faithfulness. And we, right here, right here, right here. Praise the Lord. So lift your hands and say, hip hop, happy birthday. Amen. You may be seated. Praise God. Um, I guess I need to, what is, what is next? I kind of lost track of where we are. Could somebody bring me my iPad right there? No, I know what I'm going to do. Forget the iPad. I don't, I don't need that. I'm going to have Pastor Ike come up, and he's going to receive the offering. So come on up, Pastor Ike. Hallelujah! <laughs> I mean, how do you follow after this? <laughs> Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. It's so wonderful up here. Well, Dad ha uh, had asked me to receive the love offering for the speakers tonight, and we're happy to do it. Amen. Don't let that joy drop. Amen. You know, we like to shout and dance, praise God, but God looks for that same joy in our giving. Remember in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9, it says, Honor the Lord with thy substance we've honored him with our words that we believe was coming out of our heart of praise but until your honor reaches your pocket it's not complete amen until your honor for god yes reaches your pocket is not complete this this offering goes to pastor nancy amen and how many of you could say my life has been touched changed Amen. I learned one thing about God. The more you honor what he's doing, the more his glory comes on you. You remember the people of Israelites, you know, you look at King Solomon. They gave offerings in 2 Chronicles 7. And the Bible said that after they gave the offering, after he prayed, I said after he prayed and received the offering, the Bible said that the glory of the Lord filled the house honor contacts or makes contact with the glory of God remember the Bible said them that honor me I will honor and if we will get excited about giving I hear it I said if we will get excited about giving I said if we will get excited about giving Hallelujah. Praise God. I remember a story that doctor told 
about one meeting they were in and the uh, offering was given you know he was led of the spirit to declare whoever with a certain amount and the bible said that the boat, it happened while they were doing it the wind blew from the back towards the front how about it tonight i said how about it tonight you know poor people get scared when you are money but there's no poor person in here tonight because Jesus became poor so that you and I will be rich. So let's honor God with our substance. Let, let God know, let's let God know I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Uh, are you hearing me? I, I said let's let God know I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Amen. You know Pastor Nancy has an airplane coming. She has an airplane coming. You see, if we wait for the plane to come, we've missed it. We have to show honor towards it. Hey, I want to show this towards the plane. I want to show this towards that. What are we doing? We're calling for it. And the glory falls on it. Amen. Well, I trust that if you needed an offering envelope, ushers have given it to you. If you would like to give online, that information is here. What I have my heart to say to you tonight is honor through your substance. Let your substance speak for you. Because if your substance doesn't speak for you, you will miss part of the glory. Amen. Go ask Mary Magdalene. She'll tell you. Right? She, she, she poured out the highest. Amen. Amen. In Nigeria, mom, that's what we try to tell the people. Don't give like you are poor. Give with an attitude of gratefulness. God has done in your life. And it will open you up to his glory. Which the Bible tells us that he supplies all of our needs according to his riches in the glory. How do you tap into the glory? Through honor. How do you honor? With your substance. With your substance. Amen? All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the privilege and honor of participating in what you're doing. As we sow tonight, that's us declaring our honor for you. And you said that them that honor you, you will honor. We thank you for the honor of your glory on our lives and in this service. In Jesus' name, we thank you for that airplane. Thank you for that falcon. 900 it comes in the name of Jesus thank you for a full supply it comes with packages it comes with supply it comes with equipment it comes with the most updated avionics in the name of Jesus we give you all the glory for it if you believe shout amen amen This is the time when true worshipers will worship Him. These are the days when my Father's ways will be known to men. This is the hour when the Spirit's power will move again as we worship Him in spirit and in truth. This is the time when true worshipers will worship These are the days. These are the days when my Father's ways will be known to me. Think about this line. This is the hour. This is the hour. When the Spirit's power will move again As we worship Him, it's the 
Back to that part that said holy. Holy, holy, holy is your name. Worthy, worthy, let all the earth proclaim. Yeah. 
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We worship, we worship, we worship, we worship. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we're all here present before you. To hear what you have for us. Father, whether it's doctrine, instruction, correction, moves of your spirit, whatever you have, Father, we receive it. We receive it because you love us and you have our best interest at heart. You know what you what, what you what your plan is for this service. We receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pastor Nancy, just come. Obey God. Whatever you have in your heart, be thankful for the plan of God tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We glorify you. We thank you, Father. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Pastor Heather, come here, love. I seem to recall, was it Paducah? Were you at our meetings in Paducah? A minister ministered to you. Did they call you out and minister, speak something over you? I'm Pastor Jay. I was thinking it yeah. was him. That word is important. That word is important. And when I came in tonight, God pointed you out and said, tell her, laugh your way through it. Just laugh your way through it. Just laugh your way. Laughter is a choice you make. Yes. Not a situation you feel. Yes. And it's a posture you take yes. in the face of opposition. This helps everybody. It's a posture you take because you're saying to what is opposing, I'm above you. Yeah. You do not get my attention. Yeah. You, don't, you don't get the direction for my life. You write nothing in the story of my life. And when you laugh, you're telling it it's low and you're holding it low low in your own estimation 
low in your own attention and uh, it's laughter is the flow of skill yes, because people don't understand why you respond the way you respond when you're a faith person they don't get it yeah. and they will imply that it's inappropriate but we're dealing with God and we get to choose our realm yes. no matter what opposition shows up Amen. Opposition, you know, there's no opposition from God's realm. That's right. Amen. There's only aid and assist and lift and power and ability, comfort, help from that realm. Um, the Amplified Classic Translation of one verse says, In nothing be terrified. In nothing be terrified somebody pull that up for me in the amplify i think it's the no it might be the king james i'm wanting and it's uh, say again yeah Yeah, this is Philippians 127, Paul writing says, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries. Why? Because your adversaries are watching you. If they see terror, they know they have access. And in nothing terrified. So what do adversaries come to bring? Terror. That's their intent. Yes. And in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition. What's that mean? It means it's a sign of their doom. Yeah. It's a sign of their doom. Yes. Thing about demons, they are such liars. And so they try to portray differently than they are. Yeah. They're doomed, but don't want to portray it. Mm -hmm. But when you know they're doomed, yes. you don't care how they're acting. Yes. yes. And nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but for you of salvation. So the way you respond either opens the door to the adversary or to salvation. Come on. Amen. Salvation is healing, provision, yes. peace. It's everything of that. Yes. So our response is going to determine the door. Somebody asked Dad Hagen. It was a good question. A pastor said, Dad, in my congregation over the years, because this man had a, uh, I'd say about, 12 to 1500 in his congregation pa a man of the word and spirit and uh, he said dad whenever I minister to someone of my congregation who has fallen into a coma every single time they've died I've never been able to that that's I've never been able to turn that situation for them he said is there something I need to know about ministering to someone in a coma. Dad Hagen says, yes. Before they fell into the coma, you have to know the last thing they said. Because what they said either opened the door to God or closed the door to God. And he said, if they closed it, you can't open it. Because the one who closed it to God is the one who has to open it to God. And people who love them cannot exercise their will above the person in that situation so this is what Paul is saying and in nothing terrified by your adversaries which to them is evidence mm -hmm. they're watching to see if they see you laugh they yeah. go 
that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't give me entrance. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Amen. That does not give me entrance. We have to know this. Everything of our salvation, everything that has been made ours in Christ is easy. That's right. Yes. On our part. Amen. Jesus already did the hard part. That's right. So don't let your mind call anything of the adversary hard. Amen. Because the adversary tries to portray himself as hard. It's a hard thing for you to get past me. It's a hard thing for you to get out of this. It's a hard thing for you to receive that miracle. He always portrays adversity as hard. Yeah. Laughter puts it in its easy place. It's, it's a demonstration of a higher knowledge. Amen. And we face the enemy not based on feeling, but based on knowledge. Amen. Yes. We know something. Yes. We know something. Yes. The way we know something dictates our response to something. Yes. yes, praise the Lord. So you're authorized to enjoy life <laughs> right in the presence of ad adversity. You're authorized. Amen. Glory. Uh, authorized. And it's our choice. It's our choice. It's our choice. I am so grateful that on 2013, October 2013, I had a choice. Yes. No opposition, no tragedy took my choice That's from right. me. That's right. And not everyone understood my choice. But I'm the one who had to live with my That's choice. Right. Uh, nobody else has to live with my choice. Right. And uh, I had options presented. Yeah. But knowledge, act, just staying on the yes. knowledge it makes you firm in your choice. Amen. So in nothing, terrified. Amen. Because that's what at the adversity, the adversary endeavors to do is strike terror. Yeah. Strike terror. It's called fiery darts. Fiery darts, not just darts, fiery darts. They land with force. They land with threat of spreading. But... Um, in nothing, Amen. in nothing, Amen. Paul is sitting in prison, yes. a place of terror, a place of where demons congregate. And he said, not terrified, yeah. not terrified, yes. not terrified, because our response determines yes. what happens from that. We don't determine what comes against us. We, de we determine the outcome of Amen. what comes against us. Amen. 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 Laugh your way through it. Just. Amen. And I've decided I will never have another sad day in my life. Yes. And that's a choice. Yes. That's the choice I made, and I make it today for the rest of my days. Amen. And uh, I'm enjoying this ride. Amen. Loving the ride. Amen. And uh, running my course of the race running my course of the race and uh, it's all based on choice Amen. yeah you know you can have someone who is a runner a marathon runner and they love the course mm -hmm. they love the run the longer they run the happier they are yeah. others walk up and say not me <laughs> <laughs> right yeah. same course different preference yeah. Yeah. different choice different outlook and what is somebody else's undoing place becomes our place of skill Amen. Yes, I don't know everything connected to that but it's good news it's good every news. bit of it is good, it's good news. news it's good in Amen. nothing in nothing Amen. in nothing I so appreciate the, the largeness of this word in nothing. Yes. Because 
that nothing doesn't just mean what the enemy launches against us, but it also includes where we missed it and opened the door to the enemy. Even if I missed it and opened the door to the enemy in nothing yes. terrified, not just in something the devil initiates, but even a misstep opened it up in nothing, in nothing terrified, nothing terrified. I thank you, Father. I thank you. I thank you. That divine strength. That divine strength. Thank you, Jesus. Help me with this. You help me with this. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to use, what's your name, love? Jonathan. Jonathan. I'm going to use you. Can I use you as a, an instruction? Okay. Pastors learn this. Ministry helps learn this. When you lay hands on someone and someone's holding them up, it comes right back out. We're not holders. We're catchers. So it, just let her do what she does. Stay close. <laughs> To catch but don't hold because it goes in and it comes back out because we're not there to keep someone standing we're there to be available for what happens Amen. we're not to write what happens and so I say that I, I do this at different times you're not the only one I've ever said this to so take heart Jonathan but it's an instruction for us because this is part of the school of the spirit how somebody responds in a service yeah Sometimes you can have catchers that will draw on that anointing themselves. And they're, they're, they're detracting from the one being ministered to. You know? You, you, you're not doing that. <laughs> but I, he, he's trying to help us. He, he, he wants to make you comfortable. But if you do this direction back, just let her receive. And you just be available. Father, we... we Thank you, Jesus. There it goes. There it goes. We thank you, Father. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We worship you, Father. In nothing terrified. In nothing terrified. Look at this. By your adversaries. There are there's adversaries that are particular to people's lives. That there's patterns of attack. In nothing terrified. In nothing terrified. Um, the day Ed went home to be with the Lord, people would say, how you doing? I'd say, I can't act like I don't know what I know. Right. Yeah. If I act like I don't know what I know, I lay down what I know, and what comes against me has access. It's dangerous to lay down what you know. Because God is putting in you, in every service, greater knowing. Greater knowledge of something. Greater experience with Him. Greater insight. Greater revelation for the using. It's dangerous. Dad Hagen used to say it to us. It's dangerous to come up to light and not walk in it. If I would not have chosen to walk in what I knew the day my husband left, my days would have looked different. The ministry would look different today. We can't just say we know it. It's for the living. It's for the living. It has to be lived or it means nothing. That, that it's known. It's not knowing that guarantee success it's acting on knowing it's acting on what you know don't lay it aside for anybody don't lay it aside for any way somebody thinks you ought to handle something we worship you Jesus we glorify you we glorify we glorify we glorify you 
we glorify you, Father. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you, Father. Just lift up your hands and keep worshiping him. We thank you, Father. We worship you. you father we glorify you we glorify you we glorify you father we worship you father we worship you father we worship you father we glorify you we glorify you We glorify you. Second Corinthians, I I just want to read it to you. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse thirteen. We having the same spirit of faith. According as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Now I tell you how the spirit of faith operates. We believe and we speak. We believe and we speak. We believe and we speak. speak. That's how the spirit of faith operates. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also. By Jesus and shall present us with you for all things are for your sakes that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God for which cause we faint not how come we faint not because that spirit of faith we believe and we speak. We believe and we speak. We don't observe and then speak. All right. Come on. We don't listen to yeah. Yeah. the adversary then speak. Right. We don't calculate finances then speak. Right. Right. We believe and speak. Yes. We believe and speak. So our believing directs our speaking. Not our circumstances. Yeah. Not our feelings. Yeah. Not other reports. What we believe. Yes. Amen. That's what we speak. That's what the spirit of faith does. It discounts every other thing that's not in line with what it believes. Know this. What you're believing yeah. is what you're believing for. That's right. Yes. Yes. Amen. You believe that things get worse? That's what you're believing for. Thank God we come to services and get our believing tweaked. Verse 16, for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. What takes the lead in our life, the outward man or the inward man? Inward man. Meaning that renewed inward man can dominate that outward man that tries to keep perishing. Am I saying you won't have wrinkles or you won't get older? I'm saying that your strength comes from the inward man. You, you can go ahead and be seated. Your strength comes from the inward man. If you believe the outward man more than you believe the inward man, you will not enjoy the strength of the inward man as you ought. Amen. Amen. You still, you still hooked up with me? Yes. Verse 16. Let me read it again. For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Verse 17 is where I wanted to see. For our light affliction. 
for our light affliction. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Our light affliction, you call it hard. And what you're believing is what you're believing for. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. I like this. But for a moment. Yes, ma'am. Not for years. Not for a lifetime, a moment. Why for a moment? It only takes a moment to release your faith. We believe and speak, and therefore we speak. It only takes a moment in the face of adversity that strikes like a fiery dart. It only takes a moment to turn toward your faith and speak what you believe. And that's as long as that thing gets to trouble you until that faith is released. A moment. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, I like this, it worketh for us. Yes. Anything that comes against me is working for me. Yes. Amen. 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 It's working for me. I come out different on the other side of this thing. This thing tries to be my place of undoing, but it ends up working for me. Think about Daniel. I've thought about this on multiple occasions. Um, When the only government man, the only fault that those who hated him could find is he prays. They're digging for dirt. And the only obvious, what they called dirt was, he's a praying man. (laughs) They threw him into the lion's den over being a praying man. And I would, you know, you you, kind of put yourself in Daniel's place. Mm -hmm. And there's a process that had to happen to get that man in that lion's den. It didn't just take a moment. They just didn't decide it and walk it out. They had to go through a government, so to speak, process. And if I were Daniel, I'd be fine with saying, God, any time during this process that you want to intervene would be perfect. But it looks like God's not doing anything but standing back and letting opposition have its way. I've thought about that so many times. The night before, that is to be carried out. God, this would be a good time. This would be a good time for you to change this whole situation. While they're walking him from wherever he was kept to the place. God, this would really be nice. And God seems silent. But to the praying man... He knows something. Yeah, that's good. He knows that's good. Something. Yeah. Yes, he does. So they walk him and they throw him in. He had he's a government man. He has seen that form of capital punishment used before. Right. Right. He's never seen him come out. Right. Yeah. But he gets to believe something he's never seen. Yeah. He gets the privilege of being first. Amen. 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 And I've often thought, now we know the outcome. Uh, Oh, I didn't bring it. Um, I have on my home screen, (laughs) um, on one of my devices, a painting that I, I, I appreciate it. Because it's Daniel in the lion's den. No, I don't have a persecution complex. <laughs> but I love the posture the artist painted him in. The, the lions are back here completely, um, seemingly unmoved that Daniel's in their space. And Daniel's, there's a space where there's a window and he's just in there looking. 
His back is to it. Do not for a moment. Do not for a moment. His, 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 this artist captured this, this attention. Faith is your attention. What's your attention on? That's faith. That's faith. And uh, I've often thought Daniel probably would have appreciated an earlier deliverance. But of course, the king realized he got duped. And he's the only one not resting easy that night. Right. That's right. right. That's right. Yeah. That's Daniel's right. resting easy. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And he comes the next morning, Daniel, was your God able to deliver you? <laughs> because Daniel went in all the way. It worked for him. Why? Because if God would have delivered him during that process of accusation against him, would have delivered him the day before, del delivered him the night before, delivered him during the walk, yeah. mm -hmm. he would have been delivered, but still those enemies would have been in office. Yeah. Yeah. And he'd have to be dealing with yeah. them the rest yeah. of his career. Yeah. It was not about just Daniel getting out of a place. It was about dealing with the adversaries. And God let it go all the way. Because now what they sow, they can reap. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Everything with God is sowing and reaping. Everything with God. If God would have delivered him before he was thrown in, yeah. he could not have put in place what the king said out of his mouth. Take all those men who are accusing against you, you throw them in. Now Daniel not only is delivered, but all those adversaries are gone. He never has to deal with them moving forward. It does matter the wisdom of God be valued because he's not just thinking of the immediate moment of deliverance. Yeah. Yes. He's thinking of what this deliverance means on the long term. Yes. Wow. He got rid of all of the adversaries yeah. in one swoop moment. Yeah. Yeah. The, why? Because God was mad? No, because they reaped what they sowed. Yeah. That's right. wow. His opposition worked for him. And them trying to get rid of him, they're the ones that got gotten rid of. That's right. Opposition working for him. The devil throws something at you, you come out more skillful. Amen. Now you go out and you tell somebody. And you teach somebody. I had no idea that some of those seasons of great opposition that were great to me. In my life, I had no idea that the, when God said to me by the Spirit in 2011, all I want you doing is practicing peace. I had no idea that what that won for me in the face of great tragedy in the face of opposition, in the face when it looks like things could all fall apart in a day. God wasn't just thinking of me. He was thinking of the half a billion people now that are available to watch the teaching of Jesus the healer. And now that deliverance is multiplied over and over. Because it's not just about bringing me out. It's about using that to become skillful and now I'm not just out of the lion's den so to speak now I'm I'm telling others I had no idea when he was teaching me he was teaching me for you you had no idea that what God was teaching you it's not just for you 
That's why there must be testimony. Because what God does for you, he intends to multiply it through those who hear what he's done for you. But if all we do is have a testimony that sounds like someone who doesn't know the word. And we just lay aside our faith. Lay aside what we've been taught by our pastor. Lay aside what we've received in all the services. Then God's not able to multiply his deliverance through you for others. If we sound like others, we offer them nothing. That's right. But if we hold to that spirit of faith that believes and speaks, believes and speaks, I believe and I speak, I believe and I speak. Today, we're still having miracles received in the lives of people just because Daniel's outcome. It's still speaking. It's still showing what God will do for them. So this verse 17 of 1 Corinthians 4 for our light affliction. Quit calling what's against you hard. Amen. What you believe is what you're believing for. That's right. You believe it's hard, that's what you'll have. That's right. And it takes a renewed mind to call it the way God calls it instead of calling it the way those around you call it or the way the flesh calls it. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, it works for us. It works for us. It works for us. It works for us. It becomes our servant. That which was meant to attack and undo us now serves us. Because we gain skill in the face of that and then we go out and tell others how to be skillful in it. And that which was sent to undo us now becomes our servant. Amen. Amen. The genius of God. When is our affliction light? In our thinking. In our mouth. When is what comes against us working for us? Notice it says it's working for us a far more exceeding. What's it exceeding? The opposition. A far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Look at verse 18. While we look not. If you're calling something hard, it's because of what you're looking at. That's it. It's just as easy as your attention. It's just as easy as your gaze to fix your life on something that is your answer instead of on your problem. It's just flipping your gaze. A spirit of faith is simply what you choose to look at and talk about. Amen. 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 While we look not. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Verse 18, while we look not. So to look at it is to disobey God. He says, while we look not. We look not. We look not. And if we decide to look, God can't keep us from going the direction we're looking. Because we always go the direction we're looking. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord Lord. for our light affliction, which is but for a moment. It works for me. It works for me. It works for me. That which came to undo me will become my servant. It will assist me in my spiritual growth and development. It will be the opposition that builds my faith muscle and my skill. Amen. 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 Complaining. Complaining is looking wrong. You're looking at the wrong thing. It's wrong believing. Faith has no complaint in its mouth. I said faith has no complaint in its mouth. People have a bad habit of complaining. And they don't realize with every complaint, it breaks down the flow of faith in their life. 
Why? Complaint is the flow of the natural carnal man. You don't get the house you desire complaining about the one you're living in. You don't get it. You don't get the company or the business of your own complaining about the boss you're working for now. Not possible. Not possible. Amen. Because faith people have a way of talking. And you put a bridle on that tongue and you say, I don't talk like I used to talk. I don't try to get attention by telling people how I'm being mishandled. Complaining is nothing but uh, 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 talking about I'm being mishandled by this, by this situation, by that situation. Praise the Lord. While we look not. While we look not. So to look is a sin. To look is a sin because we're told to look not. How many times we, we say, when I get to heaven, I'm going to talk, about, talk to old Adam and Eve. You messed it up for a lot of peoples. Why did you look at that tree? Why did you get around that tree? Why did you touch that tree? Before you ate it, you did a lot of other steps. <laughs> right? Why did you let that serpent have his way in your garden? And you know what they're going to say? Why did you? Why did you? <laughs> because everything they lost has been restored, but more. Better covenant. We read over there in Genesis, and we won't take time to turn to it tonight, but we read over there how God would come down in the cool of the day and fellowship with them. Why? Because he gave them authority. And then he came down and was imparting his mind and his ways and himself to them so that they would be the agents that would carry out the way, uh, if I could say this, the mind of God through their authority. He didn't just give them authority and then walk off and leave it to them. He came down and fellowship with them so they'd know how to, what their exercise of authority needed to reflect. Needed to reflect the one they're in fellowship with. We have it better than they did. Hallelujah. Why is that? Because God would come down to this place. Yes. Under the new covenant, we've been raised and seated with Christ. Now we're invited to go to his realm. Yeah. He came to man's yeah. realm to fellowship. Yeah. Now we yes. go to his yes. realm. Yes. Spirit realm. Yeah. We Amen. fellowship there. Amen. Yes. It's a higher Amen. Amen. How do you fellowship with him while you look not down here? Right. While you look not down here. Yes. Lots of things to see down here. Uh -huh. Lots of things you get to practice on not looking at. You get, every day you get to practice not looking. Amen. 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 My mother... Um, Birthdays and Christmas. Thank you for my birthday. <laughs> that, that, I recognize that Amazon man. <laughs> when I'm on the road traveling, I order lots of stuff so that when I get home, it's Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> I like stuff. Yeah. I like stuff. <laughs> um, so I order lots of stuff. <laughs> I like my Amazon man. He's my personal employee. <laughs> Prime delivery. Prime delivery. <laughs> Birthdays, Christmases in our house were different than they are today. For our birthday growing up, mother would say, what you want for supper? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. And she'd make a cake. That's it. You're welcome. <laughs> Today, if people don't get the princess crown and a jumpy jump and a pony, <laughs> they just, oh, I didn't get treated right. Let me tell you how to get treated. 
they weren't depriving us, but that was the way of that day. That was, there you go. <laughs> and Christmas, you didn't turn in a list. <laughs> My, I didn't turn in a list. And there were four kids in the family. And mother, at one point, when my brothers got older and were all going off to college, she had to take on a job. Up until that time, she had been a housewife. So when my brothers, they were 9 and 10 years older than me, they got in college, she got a job at a bank. To, she'd just take her paycheck and just take it straight in and pay for the universe, you know, university tuition books and stuff. And so um, my parents were generous as far as they could when you got four kids. Um, <laughs> you couldn't trust any of us kids <laughs> in certain respects. My mother could not handle surprises. I'd say, Mom, I got your gift. What is it? <laughs> I said, well, I'll bring it when I come. No, what is it? What is it? I got that gene. And I think every other kid in the family got that gene. There was no such thing. She, well, I, 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 anyway, let me finish this story. She made a mistake because one Christmas she was at work we were off for Christmas break out of school and she had all the Christmas presents under the tree. Oh, that's a mistake. That's a mistake. Because <laughs> she would go to work and there was this one big box that was glorious. We didn't know what it was, but something that big was spectacular, and there wasn't often spectacular. So very carefully, we would unwrap it, unwrap it. Oh, y'all, come on. Come on. You're no fun. You rule followers. <laughs> There are some people that are rigid rule followers. Well, I didn't get in that line. <laughs> and we would unwrap it very carefully. We took it out. Ah, this is a ping pong table. Oh, yeah. It had the paddles. It had the ping pong balls. We took it out, played it all day long. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't thought of that what's the matter with you <laughs> in our house that kind of thinking was award rewarded yeah. Yeah. ah yeah. someone thought of that you played it all day long Wrapped it back up, <laughs> put it back before she came home. When she goes to, to work the next morning, unwrap it. <laughs> Played it all day long, all for it. Put, wrapped it up, put it back up. Nobody's telling on nobody. <laughs> She never knew. She never knew. We waited till she was almost dying before we told her. <laughs> Get real far away from that time of punishment, you know? What was the problem? The problem was we looking at it. We saw that box. Something's in there. Something good. Something good. You want to know why you can't stay on a diet? Because you look at the, at the dessert. You're looking at it. That's exactly right. You ignore it, act like it has nothing to do with you, and let it just pass you on by. Don't give it a thought. 
It's all about what your attention's on. No, I'm not. I'm not a joking. What you look at, you respond to. Good or bad. Good or bad. And God is telling us the key for the spirit of faith, for light afflictions, for something of opposition that only lasts for a moment and something that works for you. Don't look at it. Don't look at it. Don't look at it. Brother Hagen talked about that when he was a teenager on his deathbed and um, he would have multiple heart attacks every day. He had wooden spindles on his headboard and when those heart attacks would come he would grab hold of those. He, and he was born again at this time but he didn't know healing was available. And God was dealing with him about this sin of worry. What's worry? What you're looking at. It's what your attention's on. And uh, God was dealing with him with that sin of worry. God did not teach him first as a dying young man with no hope medically. He did not teach him first about healing. He taught him first about the sin of worry. That's right. Why? Because he was practiced at looking at the wrong thing. God taught him and expected him to stop worrying even before he knew he could be healed. That's amazing. A 15-year-old learning that. 16-year-old had no idea he could be healed, but he committed to God, I'll never worry again. That's, That's big. So he's laying there having heart attacks every day. He would hold on to those headboard spindles and he would hold on so hard to not die that he said he wore the varnish completely off of those places where he held on. But God started dealing with him that you can't worry. Don't worry about it anymore. And Dad Hagen taught us, how do you know if you're worrying, if you're thinking about it? He was in the habit of feeling around in his chest as he'd lay there because his heartbeat was irregular and he'd have all these heart attacks. And he'd go immediately to put his hand there to feel it out of habit. What's he doing? He's looking. He's looking, yes. It's another form of looking. Yes. And he said, once I committed to God, he said, I I, I, out of habit just went to fill my heart. And he says, I slapped my hand. He said, no, you don't. You're done. You're done with that. He went to have, he, he was started to have another heart attack and went to grab hold of the the spindles on the headboard. Mm -hmm. And when he did, he realized that's worry. I'm worried about dying. People don't, part of the skill is recognizing you're worrying and recognizing what worried words sound like, what worried attention looks like, what worried actions are like in your marriage, in your business, raising your children. And he recognized that act of holding on to try to live was an act of worry. He's worried he's going to die. And he said, I just said, let her go. And he said, I know where I'll go anyway if I do die. So he let go. He never again went for those bedposts when he was having a heart attack. But this is the key. He never again had another heart attack once he let go. Why? Doing that is looking. Looking at the symptoms. Looking at what's facing him. Faith has to learn where to focus. When God said to me in 2011, all I want you doing is practicing peace. That was a whole nother degree of looking only at that which would arrive me at peace. Any thought that would not arrive me at peace, I cast it down. Your victory is won or lost in your thought life. 
Your victory is won or lost in your thought life. You cannot have strong faith having an undisciplined thought life. It's impossible. Because the spirit of faith looks not. Looks not. It's, an, it's, about, it's about what your attention's on. Amen. I don't know why we're going this direction, but evidently we need it. I got no note on any of this. So... The Holy Ghost knows what we need. Because where we're headed calls for that spirit of faith that believes and speaks, not looks and speaks. Believes and it speaks. And that's what turns opposition light. Turn with me if you would. Let's go to... Let's go to Psalm... Uh, 91 you're, you're acquainted with this passage but I want to read something God said to me I was a uh, I was at Southwest Believers Convention, Brother Copeland's annual convention, several years ago, maybe four or five years ago. I was sitting there, and while I was there, I received a phone call of somebody who was asking help of me. I had helped them before, and my first thought when I received communication was, I'm not going to be doing that again. Not that it was wrong to do it the first time. Glad to do it the first time. But... I had the thought not to do it. But I always check inside. I said, God, what do you say about it? He said, do it. I said, you sure about that? (laughs) He said, because it was a financial help. It was a large, large. The first help was large. The second help was large. And... uh, He said, do it. And then he said to me, why? He said, you know how to believe me for more. He said, you have faith to believe me. They had faith enough to call you. And I'll honor that degree of faith. So I'm telling you to help them because they acted as far as their faith could take them. And that was to call you. And he said, but you know how to believe me. So helping them would take me pretty low financially, numerically, right? So I did it. And the quicker you do it, the sweeter your life is. Because you give the devil less time to talk to you. The more time you're going to mull over it, it's time you're giving the devil to work on your head. So the quick, when you know something is God, just do it, do it, just do it, just do it. So I did it. After I did it, um, thoughts, as I was sitting there, said, you have just put yourself in a very bad place by doing that. And I answered it. Devil, I never put myself in a bad place obeying God. Never. I put myself in the best place obeying God. So he said it again, and I answered it again. And this went back and forth every few moments for the next 30 minutes. At the end of that, God spoke to me. And he said, if you would just get in my presence and live there, you wouldn't even have to listen to that. What was the problem? What I was looking at. I was too aware of what I had just done in obeying God. And God said to me, He said, there are going to be things I'm going to tell you to do in the future and the devil's going to try to trouble your mind about it. And you're going to have to live in my presence to live untroubled by what I tell you to do. God's not troubling the mind, but the devil will take what God says and try to trouble you with it. Psalm 91, 
I'm going to read out the Amplified Translation. Let's look at verse 7. We could certainly read the whole chapter, but we won't for time's sake. Verse 7, a thousand may fall at your side. What's that mean? They're close. They're close. You're close enough to observe. And 10,000 at your right hand. Not in the direction of your right hand, at your right hand. But it shall not come. It shall not come near you. Why? Close enough to get, close enough to lay hold of you. Verse 8, only a spectator shall you be. Look at this, yourself inaccessible in the secret place of the Most High. We are, we are offered the place of no access to opposition. No access. Yourself inaccessible. And that's what God said to me. He said, your thought life is accessible to those threats. That's why you're, you're sitting battling back and forth. Because you have your mind on something too low. He said, if you would occupy that place of my presence, you would not even be... Those thoughts wouldn't even have access to you. I know exactly what he meant. I've lived in that place of access. Of no access, rather. I know what that's like. It's like you live in a bubble. Yes, like a blanket of peace that comes over and nothing, no matter, you know you're going through a lot, but it just doesn't reach. It doesn't land. It doesn't land. Grief and sorrow did not land the day my husband left. I was inaccessible. Why? Because of where I chose to look. You can have as much trouble as you want. And it's measured to you by what you're looking at. Or you can have as much peace as you want. It's measured to you by what you're looking at. The spirit of faith is a disciplined gaze. Amen. Practice it every day on the unimportant. Because when the big comes, when the dramatic comes, you're already skilled. Because you're practiced on the unimportant. Amen. Amen. It's not hard. God has, God has, if I could say this, demanded faith of his children. Yes. Because that's the only way we can conduct, conduct business with God. Yeah. Then it must be easy enough for all of his children to do, or it's not fair. That's right. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. It's easy. It's all based on what you're looking at. Our life is a picture of what we're occupied with. It is. Praise the Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm helped. Why? Remember what we were talking about last night? What were we talking about last night? 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9. There is a great and effectual door open unto me, but there are... If you, don't quit, if you don't learn to quit looking at those adversaries, that door will just be nothing but a door. It won't be an entrance. We can't go to the next place God has for us looking at the place of opposition. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you. We thank you. You've, you have prescribed for us greater skill with our, with our faith through what we look at. We purpose. We purpose to see what this realm does not show, but what your realm shows. The enemy has sometimes cause great difficulty in the lives of those sitting here cause great turmoil and father we're authorized to say never again never again opposition will come but we refuse to give it its place
in nothing will we be terrified. In nothing. No economy, no media report, in nothing terrified by our adversaries. Nothing. All that's left is a life of peace. All that's left is a life of joy. And we thank you that it belongs to us. Hallelujah. Stand with me to your feet tonight. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Brother David, let's sing something, would you? <laughs> you guys come up here. Give glory and honor and power. offered for us is days of heaven on earth and I refuse to live less than that every day I refuse to live less than that I will not be troubled I will not be harassed I am I am no victim in this life I'm no more I choose I choose I choose you look at the wrong thing, you'll tear up your marriage. That's right. You look at the wrong thing in your marriage, you'll tear it up. That's right. You look at the wrong thing in other people, you'll tear up relationships. Right. You look at the wrong thing in any church, yeah. and you'll, you'll violate that family. Yeah. That's right. The devil will rob from you. Yeah. Right. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. We worship you, Father. We glorify you. We glorify you. We glorify you. Pastor Debbie, which microphone should we take? Is this on? Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. Pastor Noel, come up here. Just follow whatever you got in your heart. Whatever you have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. It's the year, the year of increase, the time of increase, the time, the things that on the mind of the Father will be added to the church. Yeah, for sure, the building, that building. Sure, that academy will come. Thank you, Father. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's in my mind, and yes. I already revealed it. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. Father. Yeah, yeah, the airplane. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. it'll be easy. Be easy. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, oh. oh, everything that I think is easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Ah, so cool. Yeah, to The things that are seen, ha. Huh? The things that are seen will be revealed those that will not worry. Yeah. Mm. I will add all these things. I will add all these things. Haha. Mushke. 
Oh, the word you heard. Oh, will cause, will cause the things to be added to you. According to what I think, I will rebuild my mind to many things. Oh, ho, ho. this is the time. This is the hour. Ah, acceleration of many things. Many things. Ha, ha. Oh, ha, ha. Oh, ho, ha, 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 ha. Oh, oh, ho, ho. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those that will not look at the natural things, I will reveal. Oh, I will let them know the things that are unseen. It's in my mind, and I will reveal them to their spirit. Oh, yeah. Mm, yeah. Mm. Aha. Oh, ho. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, my. Hallelujah. Ah, ho, ho. Oh, ho. Yeah. Oh, ho. oh, my God. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. About the building, Pastor. About that academy. Oh, oh, avenues. Avenues. The avenues of God. Oh, uh, oh, 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 oh. They're ready. Oh, oh, the airplane, they're ready. Oh, yeah. they, woo, yeah, yeah, ah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it's, it, it, yeah, mm. because you refuse, you refuse to worry, you refuse to look at the natural. Ha, <laughs> oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh. ah. Oh, because this is the time. Yes. Oh, the multiplication. Yes. This is the time that things will be added. Yes. Buildings will be added. Yes. Oh, my heart, yeah. things will be added. Oh, ha, ha, things. Oh, aka, yoko, ya, oh, atikisha, oh, katiso, akatise, aku, ya, oh, ah, oh, tekishla, kushla, kisha, oh, ya, oh, ha, eh, eh, so, aku, listen, listen to what the Spirit is speaking through a pass of Nancy, because the time, the time of increase, the time of addition, multiplication, ya, good to show, because this is the time of God's revelation to the things that's on his mind. He said, Mashi, Yoko, Jesus said, Yako Shoto, Yakatasa, these things will be added to you. Akoto Shoka, Yakatasa, things will be added. Ha ha, oh, the things that is on the mind of the Father. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. During Jesus' earthly ministry, remember he made the statement, I only say, what I hear my father say, I only do what I see. The reason people struggle with what they're seeing is because they're not taking time to see with him, to see what he's showing. Then Jesus would see, and then he'd just go out and perform throughout the day what he saw in his time of fellowship with God. He'd see it, then he'd go out and walk it out. Getting past opposition is not a difficulty when you take time to see. It's no difficulty looking not at the wrong thing because you've already been shown what the Father reveals. Amen. Remember, uh, Jesus made this statement, if thine eye be single, if thine eye be single, what's going to happen? Your whole body will be full of light. That's right. But if you, look at one, if you look the right direction for a moment, then turn and look the wrong direction. Look the right yeah. direction. Yeah. Double-minded, double, double yeah. vision. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Double-minded, yeah. double vision. Yes. You're look, you got your eyes fixed for a time. Then yeah. it flips. And then it flips and flips. Yeah. Yeah. But how did Jesus keep that from happening? He took time with the Father and let the Father show him. Once the Father shows, it doesn't matter what this, what this realm shows. It doesn't matter. You're completely unimpressed and unmoved by what this realm shows when you've taken time to see what He shows. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We thank you, Father. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Glorify. We glorify. Pastor Ike, you've got something. I don't know what it is, but you've got something to add. I see valleys filled with ministers reaching up, reaching up, calling, 
calling help me out mm. help me out and I hear the sound coming out of your mom going to those valleys pulling them mm. and as many that are responding mm -hmm. are coming off yeah. and are coming off but yeah. there are some mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. there are some some even some that their voices <laughs> used to be so paranista, used to be so vital, mm. but they're not coming. Mm. They're not coming, mm -hmm. and they're not coming. Yeah. And I could see the Spirit of God saying, Move on, move on, for as many as will respond, take with you, for you will bring them to new places. Mm. <laughs> you. Places of increase. Places of revelation. Places that will remind them of what I've spoken to them yes. even back in the 60s. Mm. Mm -hmm. And they will turn. <laughs> and they will turn. And they will turn. And they will turn. <laughs> and some will cross waters large body of waters just to come mm -hmm. and be refreshed mm -hmm. and repositioned mm -hmm. and they turn completely different du direction mm -hmm. it will all come to pass yes for this is the error yes this is the error this is the error it will all come to pass it will all come to pass, it will all come to pass. It will all come to pass. It will all come to pass. And there will be a great flow of healing. Mm -hmm. Like never seen before. Mm -hmm. Just people sing. And healing takes place. Mm -hmm. And I see your mother. In the midst of people walking. You're walking. Legs are straightening. You're walking. Eyes are opening. You're walking. You're walking. Growths are falling off of people. And you're walking. And you're walking. And you're walking. And they say, how can these things be? <laughs> it is those places that have taken you in our time together, says the Spirit, that will begin to manifest. It will begin to manifest in greater measures greater measures thank you father and the father will be glad <laughs> hallelujah glory thank to god thank you jesus thank you father it will all come to pass it will all come to pass yes even those i see three men mm. sent for that aircraft mm. they will obey one, yet they're not always all close to one another, but they will obey. They are walking. The first angel went to that one and he's on the second one now. And he's going right over to the third one. And it's more like they are one over there, one over there, one over mm -hmm. there. And it will all it will all come to pass. Come to pass. <laughs> I hear the spirit saying. If your divine connection is not in order, this error will miss you. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. And it's a remind you that there were many widows in Israel, mm -hmm. but Elijah was only sent to one. Mm -hmm. Divine connection. Divine connection. If it's not in order, this error will miss you. Mm. Hawking and get in order. You can be in order from a distance. You have to be close. Yeah. And sat. Yes. And be fed. And be handed gifts. Mm -hmm. Glorious days ahead. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah.
people, we need to understand, ministers need to understand, sheep need to understand, proximity matters. Proximity matters. Think of when Jesus borrowed Peter's boat. Jesus borrowed. Why? Because then he didn't have to maintain it. Wasn't distracted. So then he compensated Peter and said, lay down your nets. And he pulled in such a large catch of fish and it filled the partner's boats. What if a partner wasn't there that day? That's right. That's right. Proximity matters. Proximity matters because the partners didn't get alerted. There's going to be a boat full coming your way. But you just have to be where you should be. Where, where you should be. People have to learn this. Ministers have to learn this. There's always going to come something to keep you away from where you should be. You have to have skill at not falling into that. Praise the Lord. Thomas wasn't where he should have been one day. He wasn't there. All the other disciples were there. He wasn't there when Jesus showed up. When they told him about it, he wouldn't believe it because he should have been there. Something was missing in his faith because he wasn't where he should have been. And then the next time Jesus showed up, it wasn't just so... Uh, he could be singled out. It was he had to get rid of Thomas's doubt so he wouldn't spread it as he moved forward in his assignment. He can't have that. He had to get rid of that. But he wouldn't have had to be singled out if he had been there where he should have been there. Well, praise the Lord. You have to decide what's most important because the devil will offer you Lots of things that might be important. He'll use important things, but you have to know what's most important. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Father. Praise the Lord. We glorify, we glorify, we glorify. Let's do something. Thursday night we will lay hands on anyone who needs healing but you don't want to miss other services because the Spirit of God could flow that way 
But if you're here tonight and you say, I came because I need hands laid on me for healing and I can't be here Thursday night. This is when I can come tonight. And you came for the specific purpose of being ministered to for healing. We want to take the time to minister to you. This is not a general healing call. It's for those who can't be here Thursday night, but you came specifically for healing. Amen. If that's you, come on up if you would. Father, we thank you for, we thank you for uh, writing that. We thank you, Father. What about you, love? It's something that's not allowing me to lose weight. Uh Uh-huh. Something that not. Yeah. Yeah. Father, we thank you. We thank you. Ah. We thank you for divine health. What about you, love? When I was little, I was diagnosed with a learning disability. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Father, we thank you so much. (laughs) We thank you so much for wholeness, making every peace, peace. We thank you for it, Father. We thank you for it. We thank you for it. What about you, love? A bit of an overhaul? A bit of an overhaul. (laughs) Father, we thank you. We thank you. Ah, there goes that anointing. We thank you for it, Father. What about you, sir? Borderline diabetic. Uh Uh-huh. Father, we thank you Ah, for balance. We thank you for it. Be whole in Jesus' name. What about you, love? Stage four. Stage four, yeah. Father, we thank you, huh? I, I so love Brother David and the, 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 the worship team. They were singing uh, Great Are You, Lord, right, in the earlier part of the service. I couldn't help but remember something that God told Brother Norval Hayes. I don't know if you've ever heard of Norval Hayes. He said, if you will teach my people to worship me more, I will do great and mighty things for them. Amen. Father, we thank you for great and mighty flow for her. We curse that cancer. We ah, we command it to die in Jesus' name and be restored. Every part restored in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Were you just up here with her? Do you have something to? You? I'm more concerned about her. Sure. Yeah. Father, we thank you. Just say, say this after me. Say, Father, I cast my care on you. You're working on it. I believe in the power of God working in her. So I add my faith to your word. That power is flowing for her right now thank you father thank you for it amen you just focus on that what i just said 
Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And I can't tell you the number of testimonies we're getting people. Last stages. We're getting testimonies. They come. The next week we get. They've gone to the doctor. Can't find a trace of it. Why? Wholeness belongs to you. I love. I love. I love. I love what Jesus asked the man at the pool of Bethesda. I love what he asked him. He'd been there in that, he'd been in that condition 38 years. And Jesus walked up to him and said, Wilt thou be made whole? He didn't say, Do you want to feel better? Do you want, do you want the pain to go away? He offered him wholeness. Put back what was missing. Restored what should have been there. I love, he didn't just offer him healing. Thank God for healing. But he offered him wholeness. The process stopped and everything put back to what, the way it should be. That's what, we, that's what God provides for, for her and for anyone who just receives it. Wholeness. Wholeness. We settle for nothing less than wholeness. That's what Jesus made ours. Wholeness. Amen. We thank you. Jesus, thank you. You're such a wonderful thank healer. We thank you. 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 And to this couple right there, just know we're standing in faith with you. We've joined our faith with yours, and that power is working. And all you have to do is say, thank God it's working. Thank God it's working. Thank God it's working. And because it's working, I'm authorized to call myself whole. Because that power is working, I'm authorized to call myself whole. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for that. We thank God for that power. We thank Him for it. Hallelujah. It is one of my greatest joys to get to minister healing to people. Minister the Word to people, but minister healing to people. I, I, so, I so love that flow of God's compassion for us. Amen. Jesus, we thank you. You're a wonderful Amen. healer. You're a wonderful healer. You're a wonderful healer. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you. We glorify you. Say this with me. It'll all come to pass. Everything that God has said to me it will surely come to be. For it shall all come to pass. I love something that Lillian B. Yeomans, she wrote four books on divine healing. She and her sister would have record of many, many psalms, hymns and spiritual songs that they got from the Lord. And one of them that she recorded in her book, I love it, and she said, God will bring it to pass. Yes, God will bring it to pass. For if it depended on you, it never would be true. But God will bring it to pass. That's all faith does. God's working. God's, God does it. God does it. Jesus said, the Father in me, He does the works. He does the works. What do we know about Abraham? He was strong in faith, giving glory to God. It said, because he believed that God would perform. That's what faith is. God will perform. God, 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 not me. God performs. My faith doesn't perform it. My faith opens the door to the one who performs it. Faith is an open door to God. Your faith doesn't heal you. Your faith opens the door to the healer. Your faith doesn't provide. Your faith opens the door to the provider. It gives him entrance. It's your agreement with him. Amen. Your faith does not have to get rid of pain. All you're doing is opening the door to the one who has already paid the price for that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Jesus, you're a wonderful healer. We thank you. We glorify you. We magnify you. We thank you. 
We thank you so, so much. Hallelujah. Pastor. Hallelujah. Thank God for what he does. Amen. He's faithful. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> I want to, I want to, there's somebody here. This came to me earlier in the service and uh, it just came back to me uh, right there. There's somebody here. Now this, this, this could be anyone. Well, it could be quite a few people, but there's an individual. It's more substantial that one leg is shorter than the other. Are you in this auditorium? Are you on live stream? Where are you? So one leg is more, you know, some people have a little bit difference, but there's somebody. Anyone, anyone in this building? In the name of Jesus Christ, what I keep seeing in my spirit, that person with that leg that's substantial, I see that now, yes. Uh, you even got a, you even got, you wear one of those shoes. One of those shoes, you know, built up. A couple in, inch or two, whatever it is. In the name of Jesus, where you're at on live stream right now, you reach your hand towards me. The power of God's coming on you as I, as I minister to you. And that power is going to take that leg and, and cause it to grow out. Father, in the name of Jesus, we agree with that person whose leg is shorter than the other. I command that leg to grow. I command it to become equal to the other one. I command it to be whole, full size as the other one. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for it. Hallelujah. Pray. Yep. <laughs> there it goes. There it goes. I see it. I see it in my spirit. Thank you, Lord. You, 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 you get up and you run around and then you tell us about it. We want to hear about it. Praise God. I don't make these things up. It came to me at the beginning, and then I forgot it. But it came back. God, God, He's so compassionate. He wants to do so much. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just thank Him for all that He did tonight, all that He said to us. Thank you, Father. We thank you for all that was spoken. Our attention, our eyes are on you. Ha, ha, ha. We laugh. We rejoice. Father God, we just have a continual feast. No despondent, despondent days, days of foreboding, but full feasting on the goodness of heaven. Uh -huh. Glory to God. That table spread before us. Yay. Oh, we take of all that's on that table. And our eyes are on it. We receive from it. We thank you, Father. We bless you and worship you. If you agree with that, say amen. amen. When you go from here, that's still your posture. Your, your eyes are on him. Don't forget tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. We'll see you again tomorrow morning. And uh, then the school of the worship and school of uh, wor uh, prayer school. Um, and so we're going to do it all over again tomorrow. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, Brother David. Thank you, Pastor Nancy. Tell your neighbor as you're dismissed, tell them I'm thankful that I, God gave me something better to look at than what I see in this life. Amen. You're dismissed.